Do you know the specific niche level of cringe that you have to occupy to get Nathan Fielder to parody you within 24 hours? That's what we're dealing with here. That's impressive. So I've talked about Sydney Sweeney on this channel before. If you're new here, I have quite the bone to pick with season two of Euphoria and its creator because I think he is bad at making television. And a lot of my criticisms of that season were directed at the choices made for the character that Sydney plays. If you're unfamiliar, Sydney Sweeney plays a character named Cassie on that show. And Cassie was more of a side character in season one, and then basically becomes the protagonist in season two because all of the drama in the plot hinges on her actions. The material that Sydney was given in this season was questionable, because a lot of it relied on either weird sex fantasy stuff, which seems to be an ongoing trend from this horny troglodyte. Oh yeah, just like that, baby. Yeah. I wish you could see what I'm looking at right now. Or to put it simply, Cassie was constantly on the verge of a mental breakdown and or humiliating herself, and Sydney played the shit out of those moments. They honestly became the most memorable parts of Euphoria season two. Bitch, you better be joking. Are you okay, Cass? No, yes, fuck it, I am in love with Nate Jacobs and he's in love with me, and you don't you fucking give me that look, Maddie, because I didn't fuck your boyfriend. You two were broken up for three weeks and three days before we even had sex, so I didn't betray you. Plus, you guys are terrible for each other, and you know I'm right, and you guys can all judge me if you want, but I do not care. I have never, ever been happier. So basically, Sydney did not actually get good material to work with, but regardless, the season left people relatively pleased with her performance, because she was clearly very good at playing an over-the-top emotional character, sort of like a psychological thriller protagonist vibe, even though that's not what Euphoria is at all. I mean, a lot of people saw her acting in this scene. <laughs> And they were like, holy shit, she has such final girl energy. They should put her in a horror movie. And I agree. Not only is she, you know, beautiful, she has a very distinct look, but looking at these performances, yeah, I think she definitely has the range to do a project that's intense and thrilling, maybe like an Ari Aster film or even an AHS season. People came away from season two of Euphoria with a lot of thoughts, but ultimately, it was clear that Sydney Sweeney was a rising star, she became an it girl in pop culture, and surely we were going to be seeing a lot more of her very soon. The issue that would soon reveal itself here is that while Sydney Sweeney keeps getting booked, most of the time she seems like she is horribly miscast, and it's causing people to turn on her a bit. Not necessarily in a how the internet fell out of love sense, although I do remember she had some kind of controversy where she went to like a Trump themed barbecue or something. But people keep seeing glimpses of her in promotional material for some of these new projects she's in, and folks, it is not looking good. Check out the new trailer for my new movie. My movie. It's actually my movie. Oh, we'll see whose movie it is when it comes out. Okay. Check out the new trailer for our new movie, Anyone But You, now. Better? Just play the trailer. Oh my god. Enjoy. But before we get there, I did want to mention two performances of Sydney's that have come out post-Euphoria that I don't believe are quite as egregious. The first is that she played an ensemble character in season one of The White Lotus, and like, this is a separate rant for another time. I have now seen both seasons of The White Lotus, and unfortunately, I can't really get into it. I don't know if there's something wrong with my brain, I really wanted to like it because everyone else seems to really like it, but I just wasn't fucking with it, guys. Maybe it's because I binged it and I think everyone else had like a week-to-week -week experience when watching it, so maybe it's better that way. But anyway, Sydney plays a character who's sort of like a juvenile, vapid girl on vacation with her family, but she does it in an interesting way. A lot of the dialogue she delivers is funny, but like many of the performances in The White Lotus, 
It's a very muted delivery, like she's not doing any of the screaming, crying stuff from Euphoria, but she does what is asked of her, and I think it was a good role for her to take on. The other one I want to talk about is that she played reality winner in an HBO film earlier this year. This didn't get too much buzz because it did go straight to streaming, but if you're unfamiliar, reality winner was arrested in 2017 for leaking classified information about Russian interference in the US 2016 presidential election. The movie recounts her interrogation with the FBI, and Sydney Sweeney does a pretty good job. She said in interviews that this is the first time she ever played a real person, she took the performance rather seriously, she spoke with reality who had a lot of confidence in her, and while this isn't a psychological thriller or anything, it's essentially a biopic, I think the character demanded a lot of the skills that she is known for as an actor, being able to communicate a lot of emotion with just her face, having layers to her performance because the whole thing sort of takes place with these two men who are accusing her of a very serious crime. Unfortunately, I think this performance did get memed a little bit because if you remember, this photo of Sydney Sweeney was sort of taken out of context and if you don't know the story of Reality Winner who served in the US military, it's just like a very funny image. All of this to say that from what we've seen so far, Sydney Sweeney does have a lot of skills that many actors want to embody. She's able to play with her emotions really well and embody them in that crazy girl character like with Cassie and Euphoria or you know pulling it back and giving a more serious layered performance in something like reality but as we've seen more promotional stuff for some of the projects that she's in that are coming out soon for example anyone but you a romantic comedy it's pretty clear that Sydney Sweeney is not a great comedic actor. So the official trailer for Anyone But You dropped a couple days ago and it's clarified some things, but up until this point, a lot of people have had questions and general confusion about the plot of this movie. Because all that was really known about it was that these two hot blonde people who seemingly don't like each other pretend to date each other and the assumption is that they actually probably fall in love at the end. The actual movie trailer does address the whole inciting incident a little bit, I guess, but in like a fan fiction way, and not an AO3 fan fiction way, in like a Wattpad One Direction saw me at a concert and adopted me way. And I guess what's been so off-putting about it is that this has been a dead genre for quite a while now. I'd say that like 10 to 15 years ago, there'd be bi-monthly romantic comedies with two attractive actors who play characters who hate each other, and then ooh, oh my god, they like each other, and that was an entire genre of movie for a long time. Not to say that there aren't good ones out there, but this movie seems to be the most derivative kind of version of those tropes. I can't play the full trailer because of copyright and also because Sydney and Glenn Powell are constantly naked in it, and I'm not trying to get hit with an ad suitability flag, especially if you know what happened to me on this channel yesterday. Go to my community tab to find out if you missed it. But if you watch this trailer, you can tell that Sydney seems super stiff and uncomfortable, and Glenn isn't much better, but he's at least embodying like that smarmy hot guy Ryan Reynolds type of vibe, but she just seems so out of her element. And a lot of the conversation I've seen surrounding it has been like, wait, I swore Sydney Sweeney was good at acting. What the hell happened? And I still think that's the case. I think she's a good actor. I just think maybe she doesn't fit into the universal it girl label that her appearance warrants her. Because let's be honest, if you're a casting director, that is a big part of it. I think she does have talent, but she has to get better at picking movies if she does have that kind of agency. For example, I could see her having a similar trajectory to Emma Stone, who has done plenty of commercial stuff sure, but has also done some weird shit, and that ability to take swings I think has made her a better actor over the course of her career. Or somebody like Mia Goth, who has a distinct look and really picks movies that play to her skill set in horror and psychological thrillers. It's weird because you look at Sydney and expect her to be this all-American actress, someone who is good at everything and can get thrown into projects just because people like her, but I think her particular brand demands more than that. Sydney has unfortunately had a one-two punch this week because in addition to the trailer for anyone but you, the trailer for Madam Web dropped. And this is kind of a different situation because that movie looks bad in a different way, but it's not necessarily doing her any favors. So up until the trailer dropped, I thought Sydney was the star of this movie, but that is actually Dakota Johnson of all people, who is sort of taking the brunt for the reaction to this trailer. If you've seen that meme from the promo, you know, he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. I can't, I can't even say it without laughing, it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> 
But yeah, that is just a very unfortunate line read from Dakota there, and that seems to be setting the tone for what this entire film is going to be. But Sydney, I guess, is playing one of these other spider girls, and she's in the trailer a little bit. She seems to be dressed as this nerdy, awkward young woman, and you can just tell that it's the wardrobe department trying their hardest to make her look different. But it's the same issue, her line delivery is very stiff and stilted, and this isn't necessarily a comedy, but because it's a superhero film, especially because it's a Sony superhero film, which means that they just try to rip off what Marvel does, you can expect a lot of quippy jokes throughout it, and she doesn't read superhero at all to me. Again, willing to be proven wrong here, not that I'm necessarily all in on going to see Madam Web next year because all of the Sony movies have been hot garbage. But yeah, I guess I just kind of feel bad for her because I ultimately don't know what level of power she has in terms of being able to choose what roles she takes and what kind of movie she stars in, but if she has an agent that has more agency in that way, then she should probably fire them because I do think she's talented and I do understand why she was sort of presented as the next it girl in Hollywood who could be in anything. I mean, look at her, it makes perfect sense, but she definitely has potential. I feel like it's just a case of her getting miscast in these sort of big budget accessible things when that's not what she's great at. I feel like she should almost have the career trajectory that Jacob Elordi is having now, you know, being cast in like these Sofia Coppola art biopics. And speaking of Euphoria, which is somehow coming back in 2025, I don't know if I believe that entirely. I think it will be interesting to see the cast of that show come back together and film what I believe is this final season, having had all of these experiences doing other projects. Maybe they'll all like unionize against Sam Levinson and band together and tell them that they're not gonna act until he changes his trash script ideas. One could hope. But yeah, that's all for me today, you guys. Remember to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my Patreon if you're looking for bonus weekly content from me. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time. You thought I was auditioning for Oklahoma. I haven't read it. So. Are you making fun of me, or did you actually think I was auditioning for Oklahoma? Why the fuck would you audition for Oklahoma? I'm not.